low tunnel creates a microclimate in which we can grow crops outside of the normal range or growing season. But this microclimate doesn't regulate itself and on a clear sunny day the temperatures inside can be 30 to 35 degrees warmer than the surrounding air temperature. So you can imagine when it's 70 degrees in March that the temperature in here could be up to 100. This can cause some severe heat stress to our plants. So what we need to do when we're using a low tunnel system is monitor air temperatures and ventilate when necessary to let some of that hot air escape. The general rule of thumb is when the air temperatures outside are around 50 to 55 degrees, we'll need to ventilate inside. So there's several ways we can go about doing this. With our tunnel, we have the edge secure with bricks. You might have it buried in the soil. You'll want to dig up one edge if you do have it in the soil or remove the bricks. And if you have clamps down below, you'll want to remove those as well. And then we're simply going to lift the plastic halfway over. I have clips on the top that'll help hold it in place. And then I can use my bricks along this edge to hold it down. So we'll leave this open during the daytime, let the hot air out. Depending on what the nighttime temperatures are gonna be, we can pull it back and close it at night. A great tool to keep under your hoops is a thermometer so that you can monitor the air temperature underneath your tunnel. Now there are a couple other ways that we could ventilate as well. One is when we're building our tunnel to use two narrower sheets of plastic and have them overlap in the middle. You secure that overlapping area with clothespins on cold nights, but then you can remove the clothespins when you need to ventilate. We all know hot air rises, so it'll escape through that vent at the top. The last method is to simply cut slits into the top of the plastic, and this creates similar venting holes for that hot air to escape. The obvious disadvantage with this is that we lose insect control because we have a permanently open hoop tunnel. We also don't have the ability to close it back up to keep it uh, cold temperatures out if the temperatures fall again. A number of factors influence the temperature beneath the plastic tunnels, particularly wind and cloud cover. So keeping track of the weather and looking at the temperature uh, on your thermometer under the tunnel, look at how those correlate. Take good notes and through experience, you'll learn how to manage the temperatures beneath your low tunnels.